Okay, my outstanding friends, Roger once again. Now, here's the deal today. I'm going to be highlighting Brian Forrester's work, and I mean no disrespect whatsoever. Brian is doing fabulous work. He's going all over the world looking at these unexplained structures and, 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 and carvings and statues and buildings and all landscape. What's going on? Well, the problem is, is that Brian will not engage with me on the truth of what's going on here is that these were creatures bodies they cut up and made into pieces because they were still wet at the time now here's what he has to say and again this is no disrespect whatsoever this is a terribly hard subject to broach with people that are the authorities and when you afford fight authority a fort authority usually wins so you don't want to say anything that pisses them off but I that's not within my realm of... <laughs> I, 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 I say what's real. That's all. I don't care. And then they can we'd talk. But that's just not happened. And you see all these skins coming off of here? That's, that's layering. And bodies are layered. Now this are megalithic, and they were constructed in pre-dynastic times by a civilization that clearly had lost ancient high technology because the Bronze Age dynastic people could not shape granite surfaces like this. All right, I want to make a statement. Yes, they could, because they were absolutely enormous creatures. Secondly, these were the bodies of giants that had died in the flood, and they were still moist, and that's the reason the walls in Peru and all that. These are made out of body parts. I'll show you this. It's very, very clear when you can let yourself roam into that realm without being afraid of the authorities, literally. They could etch in hieroglyphics, but they couldn't shape sculpt. You see this? That foot is real. That was a real creature in there. That foot is running out blood out of there. That's what happens to them. And that would, that's probably the rest of them. Just like this. Now here again, the bottom of the statue, we're seeing intense heat. That's not intense heat. That right there is intense body parts running blood out all over it. That's, that's... This has been corroborated by geologists that we've had on location. That's the problem. The geologists have no clue whatsoever what the Earth is like. Absolutely none. It's, and they are just adamant and nasty as it can be around me, I can tell you that. And again, it looks like sections of that statue were blown off, not struck off. Watch this. Here's another statue. You it's see the left-hand side has been melted. That's not melted. That's the guy's body. Those are ribs. This is this is the body is inside these casings. I don't know why they did it or how they did it, but they did it. This is a body. That is ribs. And I, I'm not going to go any further with this particular one today because I have stuff from him for years and years I've been showing this. Okay, again, another one of Brian's questions about this. This is very strange weather this is five years ago from brian's channel these are the ribs of another mummy out there that was coated in something i don't know what they were coated in now why they did this how they did this again i do not know but they definitely did it and the things that they made all all, all even like the balbeck stone so let's just take a quick look at that all right instead of doing the other way around going to balbeck let's just look at something everybody's familiar with stonehenge you say well that's not stonehenge i say yes it is it is the heel stone it's set way down the road it's called the heel stone it is a foot i have them too i have them here only mine are no toes and th this is new species we have new species i could show that geese turn into stone that's a goose head that's his feathers that's the pattern of his neck. If you know how to look at things, you can fully understand this. And when I put that wet, that's the artery right there. And they're flat as a pancake on one side because everything died flat in the flood. Same thing with, hold on, with my lung here. This lung has been DNA tested as human. You see that, how flat that side is? That's what, the only way it gets that flat is it lay that flat, soft, and then dry out. It was soft, laid that way, dried out flat. That's a human lung. It's been des t tested, and you can test it again if you would like, if you don't trust the test that I did. I drilled deep inside. I didn't swab anything off of here. And I did it with all the precautions necessary. I am not a complete idiot. Well, 
not a hundred percent. Now Caesar can attest to to that. He's he's been around hanging around watching what I'm doing, and we are getting extremely close to fully understanding our past. Because it's all been documented, it's just been laughed at. Well, I'm gonna laugh on no more. Alright, I'm just going to make this very quick and simple. There was giants all over this earth, even until very, very recently. A hundred percent of my giants who are DNA tested, and one of them is 150 feet at least was tall when it was alive. DNA tested, parts are sc CAT scanned, no question whatsoever. I'll show you the anatomy right now. And they are on top of the ground, not buried. Not whatsoever. They were here j until just recently. And even right in the town I live in, there was a story of a giant called Hokamuk. Hok Ho Hokamuk. Hokamuk. And he was a sleeping giant. They ended up killing him and poisoning him because he destroyed everything that they were doing here. And they poisoned him. He's a sleeping giant. He's down in New Haven, Connecticut. Right down the road from me. And I looked at it and I could see the ribs and everything in it. So this is no joke. Okay, here goes Brian again. Now he's going to mention, and I'm going to show you some stones it's that have these bumps. It's a heat effect that happened to the stone in the very distant past. All right, you see these with the bumps on them, and you see this. This is nothing more than feldspar. Feldspar is the same thing that's on my goose here. It's the same thing that's on this lung right here. It is the collagens and keratins and keratins that are the fabric of life. It can expand, it can contract, it can stretch, it can do all that. That is, and they call it, uh, I don't know, they got all kind of names for it, but feldspar. And it's always, always, always bonded with aluminum silicates. Aluminum is the key that stabilized all of this, this body parts. That's the key, aluminum. Okay, he goes on to say that something must have just exploded all this and blew it all up. Now, I say, no, they were, this is a giant's body they were working with, and these are just natural blocks. You see them all back in the background? Let's see what he has to say. Me, that even hieroglyphics are older than the dynastic Egyptians. When you look into the background, that is the original level that archaeologists found in this area. So they had to dig down in order to expose all of the stone. Again, look at the blackness on that stone on the right. That appears to be heat. All right. There, there could well have been a lot of heat here. This was during the cataclysm that Velikovsky spoke about. These people were here. They were giants. They were all over the earth. And apparently, they were related to the Egyptians, or at least the Egyptians were giants as well. There's no question about that. And we're... Were they the giants that God was upset about and destroyed the earth? I don't know. But I can tell you one thing. Just exactly what is written in the ancient text appears to be true. The earth, for seven days, Venus, uh, and, uh, this is according to Velikovsky in the accounts written virtually everywhere in the world, for seven days Venus approached earth with the brilliance of a hundred or a thousand suns, something like that. And it literally pushed so hard against the Earth's rotation that it virtually stopped the Earth from spinning and combusted our atmosphere, burnt the whole thing to a crisp, and boiled the oceans, killed all the gigantic creatures. Virtually everything on Earth, almost everything died. And that's what was written. I, I didn't make those words up. This is all throughout history. So to discount everything and just laugh and say, oh, this is impossible, when all of the stuff is here, the background even shows all of that stuff, that, that is, that's, well, let me show you what that is. Now, first of all, don't forget this cave right here. And you see all these little tiny pock marks right around it? <laughs> let me show you what that's all about. All right, this is going to be just way over the top, but it's true. These are the things that we're seeing in the background of that wall where they chopped these out. These were muscle fibers, and they would be turned into probably red granite in that area. Different areas would have different types of chemistry, but if it's fleshy, it will be red granite it will turn into. All right, I showed you that muscle fibers, and here they are. There's the real dark ones, and there's the different colored ones. They come in blocks. Blocks this way, blocks this way. This is Petra. And that right there is where that big blood vessel went inside. 
I'm not kidding you. I, this is this is muscle fiber. You saw it before. Very simple to see that that's muscle fiber. And inside here, there's nothing more than muscles. So let's look inside the treasury. What they did was they went through that artery or whatever inside here and right in here. This is all fleshy, tissuey, you know, like this blood coming. I mean, there, there was blood in here. This is all biology. Now, they, I, I have found literally hundreds of samples of almost undeniable internal structures of these creatures that were body parts. That is a tendon. That's the fleshy part. They put iron rebar in here and tried to salvage it and all that stuff. So there is some stuff that was added. Yeah, but this was a body. That's actually the, the way the... Whoops. That's the actual way the... Um, muscles and everything in the arm form and the bone in the center and this is this is um this is biology and there is no denying this and this can be tested now this this red stuff that is all fleshy bloody and and that's where it runs down to the bottom of the feet it's still fluid and it is still mobile this is tendinous material. These statues, they say, oh, they were made in the 1500s. No, they were not. I, I, maybe they were. I don't know. I don't care. They were giants, and they were petrified in some manner that we are unfamiliar with. All right, this is basically what you're seeing over there where Brian Forrester was. There's going to be an abrupt transition between where the tendons, these are tendons, run into the muscles where it turns red. Usually it's white and just bleachy looking, and then it turns into a reddy, and sometimes it's just saturated with blood. You see, remember I showed you those caves and holes in there? There's going to be, has to be fed with blood. That's blood. And these, these are the muscle fibers. They need to be saturated with blood. Tendons are a different issue. Tendons, um, let's see if I can see. Tendons come, to, all they do is lock it into the bone or whatever is down here. And they lock in a tendon, a little flexible. It's not real, it's flexible, but it's not stretchy. And they come in these blocks. And if this was laying flat on its side, that would have been just as flat as a pancake and, and that's what we see all around the earth and then we see them turn into this now this is in my shop I have this here and this is the end of the muscles where the fibers break off on the muscles because at a certain point it gets weak coming down this way it's stronger and stronger and stronger and stronger and, and bam that's where it locks in this is where you can have your muscle movement this is very very little tendon movement it's under always under tension so as you pull away this takes up a little, little bit of slack between that and the bone here. And the glue at the bone is just unbelievable. I've been studying this very, very, very deeply. And no one will give me a, a moment even to look at it. So <laughs> I'm just going to keep doing what I'm doing. See, there's Muscle Mountain. That's a mountain of muscle. Don't tell me that the water slashed in this way, and then the next week it came back this way, and the next year it came back, but then back forth. That's impossible. Absolutely. And why would it have all the red, fleshy, iron blood running out of it? And just a loose connective tissue laid stay, stay in there. This is, it's insanity what they are telling us to believe. And refusal to examine is, is just not becoming. This is right in my backyard. <laughs> this is this is huge. It's over two feet long. I think it's almost three feet long. It goes back to over ten years. But it is absolutely 100% certain it's human. And it's laying on the top of the surface. I didn't dig for that. That's the fingernail. And it's really very well coiffed. This guy was taken care of nicely. That's the pad in the back of the finger that bumps against the next bone. The fingerprints came off here. Your fingerprints are the same. They're right on the edge of your fingernail if you look at it real careful. And here's what came off when I, because you can't get blood out of uh, the outside edge of skin. You can't, there's just no real blood in there. But inside, underneath, is there plenty of the blood. And that is like, see this is what's on the outside. It's almost like a rubber pad. That's a grip skin. That's it right here. That's, that's the fingerprint skin. My thumb is the same size as one f ridge. <laughs> and, and, and when I cracked it with a hammer, it came right off. It just peeled right off, just like that. And then underneath, there's plenty of artery blood, and that's what I took away and uh, took out and had sent off to be tested. So this is, this is no joke here. This is real. And the other one was just, well, not as big as this one. 
this one was really big uh, the other one was about a little over three feet wide the actual whole hand and I, this one I had the whole hand for and fingers and knuckles and all kinds of stuff from this one and I even have a toe of one of them from here too it was about 70 feet down the back uh, but still this was on not not deep this was right basically on just below the surface this came out as we had dug for a foundation for my wife's office and but the toe was right on basically on the surface of course they plowed up when they were originally built the house long ago anyway most of the stuff I have was on stone walls. I think I probably mentioned that. And the, the, the property's a good-sized piece of property, and there's a lot of stone walls, and they're all over the place. They're everywhere. And I just sold a couple of building lots, and I to my sons. Well, I didn't sell them to my sons, but I, I, there's a guy building a house in the back here, digging up, and there's a lot of stuff coming out of the ground. I don't know. I, I was thinking about going back and looking at it. It's not my stuff anymore, but. <laughs> I'd sure like to see what's down there, because I didn't dig for anything. All the stuff, my stuff was right on the top of the surface. And stone, they, they, in New England, they used to take a lot of farming, obviously. And I guess they took the rocks and they made stone walls out of them. And um, so they couldn't have been very deep. I mean, they didn't have excavators or anything. I think they were just trying to get deep enough so they could put their crops in. And when they did, that's what they came up with, was all these crazy rocks and when I first looked at them I said this is insane this can't possibly be and the more I looked the more it was and then I found out that just every single one of them is from some form of a body part when it's coated with this kind of stuff here this feldspar when somebody said oh that's feldspark well, what does that mean it's an aluminum silicate well, what does that mean it means that somehow the outside here became bonded with aluminum little bits of aluminum that stabilize the surface. Aluminum goes this way and it goes that way in a periodic chart. And when you take them, if you ever look up a, an experiment they do where they take aluminum and they put one of them in, in um, acid and one of them in salts and they just both explode into craziness and they just, they just dissolve. So what they do, where as they dissolve, they go try to find somebody that they can bond with. Aluminum's over here. And you got all your transition metals up here. And what they do is they go in and aggressively change these molecules and add little pinchers to them to go and hook up with other things that would normally rot. And when they become stable and then they dry out, they made walls out of them. And the walls were still wet. I mean, the stuff was still well when they made the walls. And I've talked to Brian about that, too. Well, I didn't talk to him, but I've, we've communicated. And, you know, he's really not interested in the things I'm asking him about. And, but he's always asking these questions. How does this happen? How does this happen? You can't ask the questions and not discuss what the possibilities are. And I'm showing some pretty good possibilities. This is DNA tested. That's CAT scan, DNA test. Well, here's what's CAT scan. That's a fingertip. <laughs> that's a fingertip. All right, and this was that's where the bone is, and this is a a, a thumb because the bone is off center. The bones on thumbs are off center. The rest of them would be right in the center. Now, this was when I, where a tendon went in. I broke it off to see what was. This is the other side, and there's all the blood runs down there. And in the microscope, you can see all the connective tissues and everything. That's the bottom pad of the thumb, and that's the apical tuft at the end where all of the tendons lock in and allow you to move your thumb around. I mean, it's, and it's all DNA tested, CAT scan, zero chance that it is not what I'm saying it is. And that is another part of the hand. And I have knuckles on it. This was really cool. <laughs> this is the top of the guy's finger right here. <laughs> I'm not kidding you. Well, actually it runs this way. That's the top of the guy's finger. Now, what is this? That is a tendon that runs right down the side of your finger. That's what allows that my finger to do that. If I didn't have that tendon, it couldn't do that. What is this? That's a ball right there, the knuckle ball. And this is the muscle that runs around it, which lets these muscles run up. How do I know that? Because if you look from the bottom, 
you can see it's round. This side still has the tendon up to the abrupt transition. See that round spot right there? That's the abrupt transition where it turns from here, the tendon, into muscle. Just like the other one had a wrap and then it went out into the muscle. The exact same thing here. And your muscle goes out to pull your fingers back and forth. The tendon is just there to anchor it. This muscle is all wrapped around a bone ball. And there's the bone ball. It, it eroded in such a manner. It's absolutely stunning how it did it. We can see the bone ball. There's no question that's a bone. This is all the muscles and fibers running down your finger, down to, to down here. All right, and that's the tendon that runs off to the side to make it do that kind of stuff. That's the muscles right there, and all this came out of the same hole from the same hand. So, and it's all DNA tested in CAT scan. All the stuff is CAT scan. So it's time to, to, to turn this around and be honest to the students. The students that are paying want some kind of, I would, I'd be very upset if I knew about this and I do know about it. It's just, <laughs> just I haven't paid them for, to, to indoctrinate me and tell me what I have to say to get my piece of paper. And, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. It's, it's electronics, it's everything. It's our history. And uh, it's time for some fessing up to be done in the uh, academic arena. Big fessing.